Hello, my name is Jay, and today I'm going to show you how to get data off of a hard drive after the SATA cable or the SATA port has pretty much snapped. So basically, the simple you know truth behind this is the fact that in some reality, when a SATA port snaps, you've still got some connectors left on there, and with a little bit of tedious work, you'll be able to basically make take a SATA cable and be able to somehow fuse it on there to get your data off. Um, a couple of things though, if you did by chance do um, unfuse your power connector, I would not recommend doing this um, technique for that. Um, if you break your power cable, that just gets into electrics. Uh, SATA cable pretty much just conducts um, power and signal currents, so it's not really going to be something you should be worried about too much as an electrical shock. Um, this won't cause any issues as long as you kind of keep your hands away, but I really wouldn't try it on the power cable and I just recommend getting a total, totally new board on the back here. So, with that said, we're going to basically go through and show you that you're going to take one of these cables, you're going to kind of mod this up. You do need a disposable um, set of cable, which are not that hard to find. You can find them pretty much, you can get like 10 for... I don't know, 20 bucks or 10 bucks maybe. So it's not like it's really expensive and they don't need to be high quality. So the next thing you're gonna do is you're pretty much gonna scrape away and break, basically break this off till you just have the exposed pins. Basically the exposed pins just allow you to get on the on connectors. Um, for me, I've actually gone through and kind of taken a small screwdriver. Um, I actually had one from a previous um, like iPhone fixing kit. Um, so basically you just kind of take a really small screwdriver, uh, I don't know, a needle, something like that, and basically just dig away on top of the broken connector pins. Because when the SATA port snaps off, you're pretty much left with all these top pins that are, um, have a little bit of space on top of them where you can chisel away and have somewhere for the SATA cable once you chip away everything to sit. So the next thing you gotta keep in mind though is hard drives, at least for this one when I was testing this, trying to get data off of this, my poor meme collection. And um, pretty much when I was trying to get data off of this, one of the biggest things I did find once I had done everything correctly, set everything up, um, is that once you get the, um, once you plug this power in, uh, you have to basically have a connector, uh, it connected already when you plug it in. <clears throat> Otherwise for some reason it doesn't show up so that was another thing. It might just be that the drive's not recognizing it. The final thing though is when you're going through and you're chiseling away, keep in mind that most hard drives, let me see if I can get another one real quick, has a, have a similar um, mirrored kind of, I don't know, mirrored ports. So these ports are kind of mirrored here and you'll notice that every hard drive kind of has that same feature. So the big thing to keep in mind is, and this is of course just some example hard drives, um, is that when you kind of snap this one off, which I sadly did on this one, which don't ask me how, um, you basically kind of got to keep in mind that it should be the same way that this port goes in. So you kind of got to look and it should be with the little clip facing upwards, you'll put it in there and that's how you normally attach to it if this was, you know, uh, without being broken and such. So then what you're going to want to do is you're going to take your cable that you've kind of chipped away at, which I happen to have here. And I have got mine right here. Now this has just got some simple pins on it. Um, it's got them all chipped away. Uh, there should be a closer view somewhere up here. And basically you want to take the side that has that pin or would have had that pin on there. And you just want to sit down on it and you just want to kind of press it onto those little holes that you've taken. Um, here's the screwdriver that I use. As you can see, oh there went that. As you can see though, it's got a very fine tip. So that's what I just kind of did is I just kind of rotated it right above the um, connectors. That, um, and then I basically just took the SATA cable, the side that I've chiseled away, and pretty much just sat it on there with the pin connector on the top, or with the release clip on the top. And then basically you're able to get all your data off as long as you're holding it. A um, couple things I would recommend though, if you want something a little bit more permanent, which I will be doing, uh, so I can actually keep this drive because this is eight terabytes and it's a NAS drive, so I don't think I'm going to be wasting that. Um, I wasn't the actual, actually the one that broke it though, so we're good. Um, I got this for free, so if I can get this working, that'd be good. Um, I did have to get the data off though. So regardless, basically you've got your nice, you know, hard drive you can get your data off now, as long as you keep those connectors. Um, keep in mind that you might want to have something that holds it down because otherwise um, something like movement um, may crash your system. Also happened when I was testing this. Um, keep in mind though that some computers aren't designed to only be receiving part of a signal and when they receive part of a signal and they have no idea what they're doing, uh, they really have no idea what to do and they crash. And that's just, and think about it, if you're developing software, that's not something you should be prepared for someone's taking 
some jerry-rigged cables together and hoping that it will magically work. So the best thing I can tell you is just keep in mind that you know you probably should have it all fully connected before you boot up the system, have it securely in there, and that's why you want to make the holes above it, and then you can put the power in and start getting data off of it. Um, as for consistency of data and being worried about corrupting your data, keep in mind you're not risking damaging any of the data on here as long as you're just pulling files off. If you're trying to write from it, I don't, I don't know if that's a good idea, but if you're trying to just pull files off, um, the way the hard drive is reading and writing stuff, it's not going to be risking losing any of your data, and this is not and something that is, like, if you're try trying to find something to get your data off your hard drive, keep in mind that this won't damage any of the data. This will just give you the opportunity to always to get more data off. You can try something else. Um, I know a couple opportunities they don't, they really risk, like, losing all your data if you try them. So this is a good first opportunity, the first try if you can successfully do it. And, um, I mean, honestly, for this, it wasn't that difficult. It just had to be a little bit careful when you were taking the screwdriver to, um, right above the, the connector ports. But, um, I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, um, give it a thumbs up. Uh, this is, uh, I have a computer modding channel. That's what I mostly do. But I realize if you're on here, you're probably more interested about getting whatever you have on your hard drives, um, off. So I wish you the best of luck. Uh, stick around, check out my channel if you're interested. And thank you for watching.